you come out with this book inside Melania. Yes, what I know about Melania Trump by impersonating her. Yes. So, and I actually watched your character video, which I videos which I thought were hysterical. I loved all of the different voices and accents and wardrobe. I love it. Thank you. Thank Very you. I, each one has their own special uh, special outfit that they never change. Now, are these people that are related to you that you're impersonating or just stereotypes that you're impersonating that you resonated with? I fall in love with a person more or less. Like I just become really interested in who they are and then I take copious notes and then I eventually develop a character. Well, so usually like a, each character is based on someone that I know, uh, whether they know it or not. So I will then develop a, a character around them, but then it diverges. It really does. Like I do my dad and like it started as me, um, doing him, like thinking about the things he would say and how it would react to certain situations and funny situations to put him in. And then it's like really departed. Like he does things that I don't think my dad would do. And so it's become something else. Uh, it, it starts with something and then, it, then the character has a life of its own. Right. And you just run with it. Yeah. Yeah. I let it go where it needs to go and, and where like how people are responding to it and what they're responding to and how I can make that character um, interact with a certain issue or sentiment that is being said and happening right now. Well, I loved the supermarket lady <laughs> and, and the Brooklyn gal. I, I was amazed at how you changed accents and how well you, you know, spoke through each stereotypical tone, voice. Yeah. Well, the, the, the trick is, is I lost my accent. I used to talk like this and then I had to lose it because I don't look like a TV Italian. So I'm Italian, but however, on TV, you have to look like a Southern Italian chick, which even in Southern Italy, I've been to Sicily and they're like, oh, you look, you could be here. Like there's no, but then TV Italian, it had, you have to look like Meta Soprano. So I do not, and I'm very tall and lanky. And so therefore I have to play the wasp and therefore I cannot have a New York accent. So I had to lose my accent. And in doing that, you learn a lot about how your language works, how vocal production works. And it became easier for me to pick up an accent when I lost one. How and long then, did it take you to switch your, your you know, city uh, queen's tone yeah. over to wasp? Yeah, well, um, I, when I went to Wesleyan, I went to Wesleyan University, and my first, when I fr really started to become part of, like, I was a, kind of had, a, had trouble assimilating there and being from a lower economic background and being around a bunch of rich kids without, you know, that's basically what it was. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard, it's a culture shock. And so... Um, when I really started to become like part of campus life, I actually lost a lot of my accent just, just from, and that was probably an indication that I was good at, going to be good at accents. I can naturally mirror the people I'm speaking to. So then, um, that was a few years to, for that to happen. And then I went to just studying to become an actor. And it, it was like, yeah, you have choice words that are very, that are give it away. You are super New York. And um, started to work on that. And it took a few years because there's a part of you that like fuses that way of speaking with your identity and who you are and how you relate to the world. And so it was an emotional experience, but at the end uh, I did it. <laughs> I made it happen. Different characters have different rhythms and also different characters have different pitches in their voice. I'm working on Ivanka Trump right now and I had to bring in a lot of, a change her, like the way I get really get into her is uh, getting rid of, it's a breathing thing. I get rid of all my, and then I have to get into like um, more higher pitches on my voice. So it's, um, so it, it really just depends, you know, and it's, it, there's kind of a limitless uh, ability to, to, to change things up. So what made you, did you know you wanted to be an actress when you were younger? Did you want to be an impersonator? How did you get into all of this? 
Well, you know, people say that do the thing you, you were doing when you were 10. And when I was 10, I was writing and performing shows in my living room. And when I did go to Garbo, I was actually performing in my living room. So I felt like I really lived that <laughs> out to the T. Uh, and so, you know, I didn't grow up in a kind of environment that was like, oh yeah, you can just go off and become a performer and actor and like explore yourself. Like that was not like what was going down in Howard Beach, Queens. Like that, that's a lot of <laughs> assholes. That was not... And what, how else would they know? You know, like this life is just so different. And if you don't, and it's scary. And so you would never want your kid to do that because you'd be like, oh, what are they going to do? So, you know, I don't like fault them, but that's what it was. And so then um, I went to college and even then, like it was a liberal arts school, but I majored in science because I was like, I need something practical, you know, pension benefits. So I did that and like, I was even talking to, it's funny, I was talking to an advisor my freshman year and I was like, well, what would I do with like an English degree? She's like, well, you can kind of do anything. Like not knowing like this is how like the world works. You can kind of do anything. And she's like, well, one thing you can do practically is teach English. So what did I end up doing with a science degree? I ended up teaching science. So <laughs> the thing that like I didn't want to do. So I ended up teaching science and and then um, I was like, I just, you know, I kept like running into performing, like I, keep, I kept running into it. And then I was in India uh, for a fellowship, the William J. Clinton Fellowship for Service in India. And then out there, I was like, if I don't do what I love to do, then like, what, like I'm wasting my time on earth. And so I came back to New York and hit the ground running and did it. But it just took so much like me running into it to, for me to finally like listen to the call, I guess you'd say without being cheesy. What's your favorite character to, to portray? I love being Mary Poppins because Mary Poppins has, is so grounded. She, and she can get mad at someone, she can like correct someone, and then she comes back to neutral. She just is so balanced in herself. It's, it's so wonderful. How do you decide which female icon to impersonate? What happened, like, I didn't really choose it on purpose. <laughs> It was only like after that someone was like, wow, you tend to pick all of like these mysterious, misunderstood women in history. And I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's what's happening, isn't it? And I think what happens is I see part of my eyes as someone, and now I'm thinking about it, like I'm a woman in entertainment who's outside the box. I am misunderstood. I have always been misunderstood. Like I grew up looking like, like I swift stepped off a Nordic Viking ship in an Italian American neighborhood and family. Like I've always felt like I'm outside. I went to Wesleyan and then I was like this Queens speaking woman. And then I'm in a, with a bunch of waspy nerdy kids. So like, this is, this is like my life. I've always been mysterious and different. And I think I just resonate with each of them at, at certain points and go forward with that. So, uh, do, you, do you try to find like a comedic value in, in the women that you choose? Always, always. There's always something about them, which I think is hysterical. Like, it's just so, so funny. I mean, Greta Garbo, I, I really thought it was funny how she like, was this mysterious she played with the idea of mysteriousness mm -hmm. and she actively knew she was mysterious and she like lived it up she <laughs> totally did that but she was also like alone in her house a lot and isolated and quirky as hell so that you know I just find things I think are I think a lot of people are funny especially people who are miserable the more miserable you are the more hysterical I think you are so what made you choose Melania well, I came off the stage of a comedy show at Parks Casino, and I had done a, a joke about Melania, uh, something to the effect of like, oh, well, well, I saw a picture of myself at a certain hard time in my life, and I was like, wow, I look like Melania Trump. Miserable, but trying. So I, he came off, and he was like, you got to do a Melania Trump impression. And I was like, dude, I don't, I do original characters. But I tried it. I went, I went and I did a few videos. They did really well. So then I went to Pride as Melania. That went well. Then someone asked me to do stand up at a Halloween show. And I did that and it went really well. And I was like, now I got to start doing stand up as Melania. And then I'm like, let me develop a, a comedy channel, parody channel on Instagram, Flotus Official. Then let's do a touring show. I mean, the thing just like kind of 
like went out of my hands. <laughs> it got out of control. And so <laughs> this comedy project went all crazy. And so uh, that's how, that she chose me in a lot of ways. And so that led into writing your, your book. Yep. Yep. And so then um, a few people suggested, like, why don't you write a book about this? Because one question everyone asks you is, what do you know about Melania Trump? from impersonating her. Because my work usually is in this border between impression and impersonation, where, and I don't really make these distinctions, but some people do. Impression is just someone like, it's more of an angle, a more hard hitting angle, where an impersonation is more of a, an embodiment of a character and a copying of without a point of view. So um, my, I definitely have a point of view on my characters for sure, but I do try to inhabit them. So in that process, I do get to know, you get to know your character. And I'm sure as you know, as an actor, like you, you learn things about people just by inhabiting and living in their skin. So what was your character development, uh, for Melania? What did you, what did you, you know, choose? Yeah. I watched your video. I saw your wardrobe. I yes. listened to your voice, the tone, the yep. choices that you made. What I started with was, um, well, the voice is something for me that was important. And I replayed the tapes over and over again. And then also for me, I'm a little bit of an outside in. I started going over like how she walked and I, I met with a movement person named Robert Mahler. And we worked on how, just in that short time we worked together, she was, I was able to nail how she walks and that inform the psychology of who she was. I read stuff on her that was really helpful and I have a Google alert. I know everything going on with her at all times. And so um, that's, that's also really helpful. Rumors on the street, people start telling me stuff about her because they know I'm doing this. So I get to hear all sorts of gossips and start, this starts to like put a picture together of who this person uh, really is. And by the way, rumors on the street come from any character I do. People hear that I'm doing a certain person and then all of a sudden, like even with Greta Garbo, you're meeting with descendants of famous people. And so you'd be surprised how small the world is. So then this all started, and then just started, started thinking about important questions that we all answer as actors, about our characters. But I feel like I had such like a, a base to inform that about like who she is and what she wants. I use a lot of lucid body work, which is, uh, if you're not into new age, close your ears. We use sh chakras. <laughs> to it's using chakra and are thinking about which one is prominent and it just basically a key a way for you to shorthand psychology of a person like their sexual center versus their nurturing center versus their ego versus their ability to speak and be heard so uh, thinking about that was really helpful so did you what are you saying you channeled through your chakras or you opened a or you focused on a specific chakra well, you think about, it's like um, Lucid Body by Faye Simpson is this technique in which you think about like, we all have chakras that we, and we have certain ones that are imploded or exploded uh, or blocked uh, or balanced. And so you think about what, everyone has a your unique imprint and then you have shadow, the shadow part of that. So you think about what that person's unique imprint is. And it's amazing because what, what I find is that like there are certain people say I really look like Melania and I don't, I do not look like her, but I feel like it's almost like a magic trick. Like the, when I do lucid body, because I look, in fact, the publisher, when he saw my book, he was like, you can't use a picture of Melania. I was like, that's, that's not Melania. <laughs> that's me. Yeah. Let's talk about the book. Well, it's, it's, ba it's a collection of humorous rants, me like telling you, this is how Melania walks and this is what it means about her. And, or this is answering questions about like, was she a hooker or what kind of mom is she? Things like that. And then it's also humor pieces that take off that. Like I have Melania's first press conference. I did a take, a, like a fake news article about that. I do like, a th like Melania's thoughts as she stares at Donald going away in his helicopter. Um, a marketing plan for her plan to like nab a billionaire. She writes a marketing plan. So things like that. Um, just taking off, I remade all of the Grimm's fairy tales for Melania. So like, like Rich Scheidner said, uh, who um, reviewed the book, gave a testimonial for it. He said, you use every device in the English language to write this book, which I did. <laughs> a lot of them. So. so you put her in Grimm's fairy tales? 
I did. I did from Cinderella, uh, Don, like a uh, Melania and the Seven Trump Dwarves, Rapunzel and the knitted hel- hel- knitted pink helmet rope. I did um, Hansel and Gretel. That was fun. <laughs> in that one, Pat Buchanan does a high kick and Mitch McConnell is in a thong. That's all. <laughs> Uh, um, what else do we have? I have the wraps in there because I have, do have, oh, Trumple Thin Skin. I did Trumple Still Skin. Uh, so uh, um, I put, also put in uh, the wraps that Melania does. I do have a wrap video as an homage to Snoop, uh, Snoop Dogg's Gin and Juice. It's Melania wrapping for, to get out of the White House. A lot of people out there feel like really uh, boxed in by the industry and the requirements. And I guess my advice from where I am right now, and this might change tomorrow, like I might have a different perspective tomorrow. Things are constantly changing. And of course your experience in the industry is very much uh, colors the way you see things. So right now, what I, what I have seen over the years is just like, they listen, they want stereotypes a lot of the time, more time, more of the time than you'll ever be comfortable with. And they want to put people in boxes. And part of that is the economics of it and the scale of it. And it's things are so happening so fast and they just want to be able to understand people easily. So you got to like make yourself into that product for them to consume. Like it's as simple as that. And then on your own time, you go and you do all the stuff you really wanted to do. And I think that's really important because um, maybe some people find like total creative satisfaction off do, being the peg in the hole um i do not i find it fun and it's kind of fun to be on set someone else's set for a day uh but i also like must tell my own story because my complete story like who completely who i am is not represented on any screen that i've seen and so i have to make my own story in order to tell that tell really give the world what i feel like i'm capable of and so i just really encourage people to make the best work you can can start small and just keep going and make it better every time. So people know where to find me. You can go to laurenlogi.com and there you have access to all of my videos, all of my characters. You get to know a little bit about me and you can also there join my tribe of fellow arty weirdos. Who are I, I saw it join my tribe and I, I signed up. Yay. And you're on Facebook and Instagram as well. Yes. Best play. I'm on at Lauren Logie. I keep it simple. It's the website. It's the yep. social media handle all over the place. L O G I, right? Yep. On YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of the things. Good for you. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Valentina. Oh, you're very welcome.